Palamara, a flag bearer aspirant of the All People's Congress APC Party for the 2023 general elections, and he's here to talk on his intention to run for the position and his new hope for Sierra Leone magazine, which was launched on last week, Tuesday, among other things. Good morning and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so very much for having me. I like that he says his magazine. <laughs> See, you, 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 you are in the uh, media industry, so uh, it's a vision statement. Okay, thank you, thank uh, you. Um, Dr. Mara. We'll start off with um, charity. They say begins at home. Now you're asking the APC to um, give you the tickets to run for president. This begs in the question as of um, what you've done for the party that they should entrust you with that position. Ah, uh, well, um, again, thanks so very much uh, for having me here. And I want to say a big thank you to, to uh, our viewers. Well, I have done my bit for the APC. Uh, I've served the APC since I came in at State House as Chief of Staff, superintending activities of ministries, departments, and agencies. Um, we worked on the 2012 elections. I led campaigns then, along with uh, my brother, Momo Conte, may so rest in peace. We worked closely in Kwenadugu and Falaba and many other areas. We won all 444 in 2012. And then everyone knows, everyone in the APC knows that um, I built one of the finest party offices in the country, in Kabbalah. And I also did another one in Moyamba, Tayama. And I would say that I didn't do it alone, but I championed both projects. In addition, I chair uh, the party in Kwenadugu, and I've been winning by elections. You know, we won uh, uh, a very tough election for the district council. It wasn't a constituency. It wasn't a word. It was a whole district. And we led that, and we won. And I think I've been winning by-elections. But what is very interesting is, for all of these by-elections that I've been winning, reality is uh, I've always been attacked. Either they will threaten to burn my vehicles, or they will physically attack my person. But um, I'm a man of peace, and I carry my head on very calm shoulders. The reality was we delivered. So I think the APC knows that um, I've always been out there. I'm supporting the party, supporting the secretariat when the time arrives. And along with my colleagues, we put together a whole document we refer to as the roadmap to 2023. I have done my bit. Not only winning elections, but working with the leadership to ensure that we do well. And I strongly do believe that with that under my belt, knowing that if I become president of the Republic and be one of the leaders, key leaders of the APC, that those transformational initiatives could be translated into many more opportunities for the disabled in the party, for our women, for the youth, for the task force, and many others. That is what I intend to do, and I strongly believe that the APC knows this, and I will urge them to give me the platform to be able to take the party into the next election. Thank you. Be, 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 before you, we were speaking to Reverend Justin. We were looking at, um, you know, democracy and good governance within political parties themselves. You know, how do we prepare political parties to ensure and understand that democracy stand, starts there before moving to national politics? Do you strongly believe in the new constitution of your party? And do you believe the old process you have in your lower level elections presently? Do you think the process is democratic and you're satisfied with it? Well, um, <laughs> as usual with the media, uh, my thought process was that we'll handle my vision. No, we'll definitely handle the we'll vision. We'll come to that, right? But, but like, my, like my colleague asked, I'll speak to it. The party is what is, it, it I'll is, speak to it. is the platform. I'll speak to it. It is the platform. Good news is we now have a constitution. And kudos to all of us to the former leadership and to the current um, court created leadership and to each and every member of the party we've done well we have a constitution the process has commenced 
But there are issues here and there, and I think you, you might have heard the hue and cry. Um, I think the reality is that um, the playing field isn't as level as everyone would have expected. Um, you, had, you have less than 10% of people within the party you know, being accredited to vote at lower level elections. I think that isn't as democratic as we wish. And um, you have the whole process being skewed in favor of a single individual. That isn't good. And reality is you have people leading all of these arrangements who may be interested in district or national positions going forward. So certainly you can be a player and a referee, but we'll see how that pans out. So we've been complaining here and there. Um, we hope that at the end of the day it will work well. But I think we have to commend ourselves as a party. It's been tough, it's been difficult. But we now have a constitution and the process has commenced. So I think we've covered a significant mileage. I think we have to build on that. But I will urge everyone to be law-abiding, to be peaceful, and most importantly to do that which is right for the good of the party and for the country. You, you were part of those um, aspirants who met with um, the former president, who was also leader and chairman of your party. Um, were these concerns, some of the things you, you discussed and, and, and to be addressed, or it was just an informal meeting? Well, um, that was an, uh, an informal meeting, and I would not wish honestly to discuss the element of uh, what we had discussed there, but I will say that um, the key element, all of us are working towards right now, and we will, work, we will urge one another to work towards, is to ensure that we conduct ourselves in the best possible manner, in the interest of the party and for the country. Before Marina comes in, I want to ask this. Uh, there is some information that um, you were presented by Big Six as a preferred candidate, you know, for the flag bearer position. Can you confirm that? I will not confirm that because um, in the social media space, people will say any and everything. Um, you might have had tens and thousands of, of views, you know, being peddled across the social media. So uh, I wouldn't comment on that, and I, do, I don't think that was how it happened, no. Still on the issue of um, democracy, um, Dr. Mara, you're asking the APC for the trust and confidence in um, uh, to make you the presidential nominee at a time when the party is at a crossroad. Um, We've seen issues with the lower level elections and also um, the internal fight within the party. Um, kindly give us your own testimony of maintaining peace and um, democracy. Well, um, I'm a law abiding citizen. And, and secondly, I have a track record of doing that, in my view, which is right in terms of how you conduct yourself in the public as well as private space. And uh, don't forget, even at global level, I've led institutions that are, you know, peace-led. I've been chair of the G7+, Plus, which is an association of fragile and post-conflict states, I'm represented by their ministers of finance. So I've been chair of the G7+, Plus of 20 other ministers of finance across the world. But the key significant element around all of that is peace building and state building. And I've been co-chair of that globally for three years, maintaining peace and ensuring that we work with a fragile state in terms of how they build peace. I have worked with um, Central African Republic, South Sudan, and many others where there are conflicts. And I was Minister of Finance and as well as chair of the G7+. Plus. So those credentials are there. I have built those over the years not only within the Commonwealth, but within the G7+. Plus. So it is a platform that I wish to maintain. And that is how it has been. And it is just an example. And locally, even during the by-elections when I was attacked by opponent, I didn't fight back. It wasn't weakness, but I was looking at the big picture of winning. Did we win? Yes, we won. So there are many ways to skin a cat, but I will say, as the previous speaker said on the last program, that if you want to lead a country, one of the key elements you really have to be able to maintain is how law-abiding you are, how peaceful you are. And I give you another example. You know, when I built the party office in Tama after the 2018 elections, it was burnt down. 
I didn't go to the police. We didn't fight back. There was a reason for that. Those are the prices you pay for the sake of national cohesion and moving forward. That is me. So I take a look at the big picture for national development and say, below abiding, compose yourself, walk each others, even if it means sometimes holding up things that are tough and difficult and painful, but if it is for the good of the general public, then let it be so that together we'll try. If I may go further, sorry, I'll say this. You know, we're a religiously tolerant country. We just celebrated Christmas, everyone else did. And as we speak, we have a good number of Christians that are observing, you know, um, religious tenet of fasting. And that will dovetail into uh, how I call it, the Lent season, and then followed by Ramadan. We are highly religious, late tolerant country. The challenges, we haven't been able to translate that into our politics. Our politics is so toxic. Now, if I want to lead, I have to rise above that fray. And that is what I've been doing. Thank you. OK, so let's um, talk about the New Hope or um, New Hope Yes agenda um, that you're running under. What informs that agenda and how different is it from um, other documents and platforms being introduced by other politicians? Uh, thank, you thank you so much. much. I think you recall that um, at independence of our population who are between two and three million and poverty levels who are around also 60 plus percent. So our population is almost around eight million. Poverty levels remain the same. You know, when I was child of the G7 plus, I had meeting with um, the World Bank president. You've been in agriculture in my country for several number of years. Call it some cost. Have we been able to break even? We are not you know, self-sufficient in terms of food production. You and I know that we'll experience every rainfall every year. What happens at the end of the day is we experience flood. Two months later, as we sit, you'll see people searching for water. Our health profile is a bit challenging, as I said. And um, our road infrastructure isn't as good. We have our fisheries product, but we cannot export it to Europe because we haven't been able to meet their standards. There are many issues. So what I decided to do is to take a look at all of these major challenges and decided to build on the legacy of President Kroma. I say so not because he was my boss, but I served him as chief of staff, as minister of finance in all of those positions. Partly, yes. But the reality is he, do, he did a marvelous job. We did um, extensive number of road projects, water projects, energy projects, eternal bombona. But most importantly, his private sector-led project program was extremely good. It was as a result of that that you have something doing well. So the idea is, in my view, if it is we've been working on poverty reduction for 60 plus years, and we haven't been able to lift ourselves out of poverty, that there is a need to draw a line between what we have been doing and go for something new. So this document promises that seismic change. And what do I really want to achieve, along with you and you and everyone viewing this program, is to be able to create wealth and jobs. How? Good. First and foremost, and I'll say this to everyone, we have to be able to move away from adversarial politics. Toxicity in our politics is too high. It doesn't make us good. It doesn't attract investment. So the first recommendation here and the first mantra is, let us go for national cohesion. Go on the other side, be peaceful and calm. Now if we are able to do that, we'll then be able to attract as many investors as possible. So what I did is to organize the economy into three broad areas the green, the white, and the blue economies. Now let me focus on the green economy. 
we have land, arable land, we have water, we have good climate. We have the Toma bombs, the Bonda bees. All of these wonderful areas good for rice production and for many other agricultural programs. But like I said earlier, we've been, we've been working on subsistence agriculture. Yields been too low, we can't feed ourselves. So let us go for large scale and commercial agriculture. So we declare all of these bowling lands, a good number of them, for commercial agriculture. And then put together incentives to be able to attract very serious investors in that particular field. In addition, you and I are aware that commercial banks may not necessarily support agriculture at that scale. So the defunct National Development Bank will be transformed into a bank of agriculture and industry to be able to support large-scale agriculture. I'm not sure if you are aware of this, that we have seven to eight major rice irrigation areas in the country. One is in Makali. Recently, I visited Makali. It's, it's shut down. The generators are there. The training school, you know, uh, in, you know it's, it's been relegated to nothing. And nothing is working. Those seven to eight irrigation sites will be transformed into real agricultural program by attracting the right set of investors. You may not know this, that we have a good number of rubber plantations in the country, put together by the then SLPMB in the 1970s. They've been relegated to nothing. Those areas will be resuscitated through the private sector. And we can expand that particular project. This is how we create jobs. This is how we create wealth. I give another example as it is contained here. We have ranches across the country. Go up in the north. We have the Musaya livestock facility. This facility isn't working. We have to be able to put the right incentives in place, attract the right investors, work with countries like Botswana that are able to, to package, process, and export meat to be able to do this. So there are many more initiatives as I see them there are many more opportunities in the, in the economy that we'll have to leverage to ensure that we create wealth and jobs. Is this an extension of the Agenda for Prosperity? It, it sounds more like it. During the Agenda for Prosperity of which you serve, we have the agricultural business centers. A lot of money we invested in them. In, in every chief dome, you have agricultural business centers. Not it was a chief I will, it's, it's, it's a bit different. Mm. It's a bit different. Like I told you, those centers were meant to support ongoing agricultural activities in all of those communities. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is building on that at levels that has never been experienced. Now, I give you an example. Take a look at, um, I give you an example, uh, um, is it called Rokupur? Rokupur happens to be one of the oldest sites for agriculture. Mm -hmm. It is in doing well, fine. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's not doing as brilliantly as you and I will expect it to be. Now, if you do a soil study on that, and it distills all of that in a single document, you set out incentives. For example, you bring in your experts, you bring in your machinery, you know, every machinery you require duty-free. For the first two years, you are tax-free, you operate that way. Plus, government, in collaboration with the private sector, will do two things. A, either we set up a fertilizer processing center, or if it doesn't work, you have a sustainable source of accessing fertilizers. So we have to think big. It is no rocket science. If other economies are doing so too, can Sierra Leone. And I'm not just talking about um, um, Rokopo. That is Cobra by Mamela. That is Tomabom. We have to take a strategic and holistic approach to that. Reason why under the green cluster, he who is responsible for that will have to sign a performance contract with me. It is one thing that underlines this. So, like I said, what I'll do is build on the legacy of President Koroma. But what this does is to say, let us be radical. It is proper programs will continue, but what we'll go for is wealth creation. So if we have four or five major rice production companies in the country, what do you think? Will we not export rice? Yes. 
So it's doing things differently. And that is what I represent. And that is how we create wealth. And that is how we're going to create jobs. That is what I promise in this document. So that is.